When people experience significant trauma or shock, what happens is the, the experience captures all of the brain's attention. There's a change in your internal state, it's horrifying, and you put all of your attention on that, that, that experience in your outer world. And it's that particular association that starts the process. Now, from a survival standpoint, you could have 10 things that happen really good to you in one day, and one bad thing that happens to you, and you will focus on that one bad thing. How many people know that? And the reason being is because the survival gene says, get ready in case it happens again. So we tend to try to anticipate the future based on our experiences in the past. And we, out of the infinite potentials that exist in the quantum field, we'll select the worst case scenario. That's, and we'll prepare ourselves for that event because if the worst thing happens, we have better chances of survival if anything less occurs. Does that make sense? So that what people then do then is they have a traumatic event and they replay the event over and over again in their brain. And as they keep recalling the event and they keep reviewing it, they're producing the same chemistry in their brain and body as if the event was occurring. And the body is the unconscious mind doesn't know the difference between the actual experience in their life that creates the emotion and the emotion that they're fabricating by thought alone. To the body, it's exactly the same. So the body is re-experiencing the event over and over again, and it's the redundancy of that cycle that begins to condition the body as well as the brain to live in the past, because now the trauma is existing in that implicit memory system that we just talked about. And all the talk therapy, all the counseling, all of that stuff is not going to change it because it's, it's using just the declarative memories. So we've seen a lot of vets in our work heal themselves from post-traumatic stress disorder and a lot of energy psychology and EFT and EMDR, the energy psychology techniques are addressing that implicit memory system in the body as well as the brain. And if you look at a functional scan of someone with post-traumatic stress disorder, it's called the ring of fire on a spec scan. The whole entire brain is lit up and that person is literally way out of balance. So in that state, what they're doing is they're constantly scanning the environment in anticipation of anything that's going to come close to that past experience. Now when you get it right, you say, you know, you guys need to hang out with me because I'm so smart. But what happens when it doesn't happen? It's called anxiety, it's called neurosis, it's called insomnia, it's called OCD, because the brain starts over-focusing. And that over-focused state tends to narrow our mind into a single object. And that's what we do when we're in emergency mode. How have we been trained to pay attention? Tie your shoe, watch the stairs, watch the car. And it's that abrupt release of adrenaline. We think that that's focus. So then when you tend to open your focus, and instead of focusing on matter and objects and things, focus on space and energy and nothing, and open your focus beyond your body and space, we've seen this thousands of times. All of a sudden, the brain starts relaxing and getting more coherent. And all of a sudden, different compartments tend to settle down. So then the person then who's scanning their environment, anticipating that event to occur, to occur if an event even is remotely close to that experience in anticipation of it, their perception already is releasing the chemistry as if it's in the event and they'll return back to that same person at the time of the trauma. Does that make sense? So then what's happening in the brain, what's happening in the field? Well, there's a complete disorderliness that's taking place consciously, in consciousness, in energy, in neurocircuitry, in neurochemistry, in hormones, in genetic expression, the person is way out of balance. And so then the process then is to start creating order and having them get beyond those emotional states. And I always say, forget the event, forget it, just work on the emotion. And, and we have seen this in so many people that have healed themselves of cancer and all kinds of conditions and, and rare genetic disorders. They got beyond the emotion, and when they got beyond the emotion, the body was finally liberated. And all of a sudden, they're perceiving a whole new landscape that they could never see because they're no longer looking at their future through the lens of the past. So then, the brain is just an anatomical piece of material. And science says that you can literally rewire your brain, you can literally change its function. 
but who's doing the changing of the brain and the mind and it's consciousness now consciousness to me has two elements consciousness is awareness awareness is paying attention and so then there is a free willed level of awareness called you and I the journey journeymen the journey women from source down to matter and we got to this level and we didn't go any further because tiramisu is here so we stopped <laughs> chocolate too so then all of a sudden we drink the wine of forgetfulness and we have to journey back to source and then as we journey back to that objective consciousness that objective consciousness then is the consciousness of the field observing all of this into reality so then when your consciousness turns inward and it begins to interact with this greater consciousness you can't enter as a somebody you can't enter as your personality you have to enter as a nobody and the element of taking your attention off your body off your identity off of things off of places and off of time leaves you as pure consciousness so then now all of a sudden the brain starts moving back into orderliness because the operator's gone and all of a sudden you start getting that kind of synchronization that takes place called coherence so then as the autonomic nervous system which is a self-organizing intelligence begins to create order where there's disorder all of a sudden the upscaling of biology begins to change so consciousness the free willed you and I is animating a body to produce different levels of mind that individual that objective consciousness which is the field is what we interact with and so it would be a good idea then if all of your attention is on your environment to close your eyes and disconnect from your environment to sit your body down and no longer allow it to move and be greater than your body and really give up your appointments and your thoughts about the past and the future and find the present moment. And if you are going to create something by thought alone, then you have to become thought alone. And you have to literally linger in that infinite field where all possibilities exist. And we've measured it enough times to see that when you truly do that, all of a sudden now, your brain and body begin to change as a result of it. I'd like to add something to that. This. Uh... This field uh, is so new that we're talking about, the, the discoveries that are being made so quickly uh, that mainstream is not able to catch up with all the new discoveries. So we're still thinking about uh, a mechanistic model, a mechanical brain, uh, consciousness is, you know, science is still struggling with that. On the one hand, on the other hand, the discoveries are pushing us quantum, quantum understandings in, into the future and one of the places where this is happening is new science and this is peer-reviewed science so this isn't theory or hypothesis or or new thought this is uh, happening in, in peer-reviewed scientific research is now suggesting that the memories that you and I have and the question was about what's happening in, in the, the, the brain and the mind that our memories do not reside within our brain that our memories don't even reside within our bodies that the memories reside in the field and what we call the brain is our accumulation of antenna you can think of them like that of the antenna that we grow and create in our lifetime that tune to the place in the field where the information resides does that make any sense if i say it that way so i mean this is so real this is so real i, I, I did a pre-conference workshop we touched on this a little bit on, on wednesday if some of you i think are in the room here this is so real. Uh, my colleagues in Silicon Valley, that uh, I left Silicon Valley, they're still working there. They are actually developing computer memory chips based upon a droplet of water uh, that is a very refined droplet of water rather than silicon. And what they're finding is they can pump terabytes of information, entire city blocks of a library into this droplet of water. And they're saying, how in the world is the droplet absorbing all this? Then they figured out it's not. The droplet is creating a template, but the information is in a field that extends even beyond the chip, beyond the computer. This is the bridge to quantum understandings, quantum reality. So when we talk about influencing one another and our brains, uh, what we're really talking about is, is our brain through the act and I mentioned this yesterday, remember those of you who were with me yesterday, the act of choosing to learn something differently and how we, we grow the neurites on the neurons, 
Okay, those are the antenna. When we do that, those are the antenna that are tuning to the place in the field that holds the memories or it holds the, the language that we're trying to learn or the mathematic understandings. We are resonators tuning to the field and that changes everything. When you think about science of mind and why it works the way it works, when you think about remote healing, when you think about entanglement, uh, remote viewing, all of those things, it puts a whole new spin. On, on all of that. So I just wanted to, to kind of, we'll probably build on this as we go through this conversation. Yeah, thank you.